بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم اولا uh, I would like to express deep thanks to Allah for this uh, for his kindness uh, protection and support during these hard days and I'd like uh, to thank Professor Dr. Muhammad Al-Ashab and his team for inviting me uh, to this wonderful and respectable course uh, during the coming minutes, I will share with you uh, my prospects for uh, diagnosis and uh, management of pediatric ACL injuries, and I hope it will be uh, fruitful and useful for everyone. Uh, I have no disclosures related to this presentation. Uh, intended learning objectives of this presentation will be the magnitude of the problem. Uh, we have to think about pediatrics, not just as a small entity. We know that we have to support diagnosis, treatment options, rehabilitation, finally, and I think the most important is prevention. When we consider BGL, the number of anterior cruciate ligament injuries reported in skeletally immature athletes has increased over the past two decades. The reason for this, in my opinion, is increased rates, a growing number of children and adolescents participating in competitive sports, vigorous sports training at an earlier age, and the greater rate of diagnosis because of increased awareness in one hand and in greater use of advanced medical imaging on the other hand. Pediatric ACL injuries occur to boys and girls, and as we know now, soccer is well popularized between both sexes. We are seeing now many kids and championships held in every part of the world for girls as boys. So it affects boys and girls. There is no racism, it can affect Africans, Asians, Americans or races. Recent literature points to the high instance of ACL injuries in skeletally immature athletes and show that these injuries account for about 35 of all knee injuries in soccer players between the age of five and six. And seeing this number in 10 years, many of uh, well known spectacular players in many uh, clubs in the world. Uh, is 16, 17, 18, and 19 years old. And you can think that these injuries, ACL is considered also as pediatric injuries. Another study reports an instance of ACL tears of 47% adolescents and 65% of adolescents who present with acute knee hemoarthrosis after trauma. In children, it's not easy to be missed because uh, children uh, have low threshold of pain and after trauma, the pain, swelling, and inability to continue their match or training uh, have uh, to put, uh, uh, to, to get uh, attention of parents and uh, trainers for post ACL injury. Another study pointed that TBL ailments fractures are more common to occur uh, more, more uh, accurately speaking, are more commonly to be diagnosed because, as we will see later, uh, many STL injuries in children are mis years, but they are partial injuries and go uh, heal with and do heal well with conservative treatments. But the most commonly diagnosed is the TBL immense avulsion. Also, it has been noted with these fractures that there is variable degree of plastic deformation with permanent irrigation of ACL fibers, which may cause residual clinical laxity despite anatomical reduction and healing of fracture. And put in mind, uh, we should remember that when refixing the TBL eminence, because many studies and many centers now are uh, popularizing uh, uh, fixing this TBL eminence avulsion fracture in a deeper position than usual to compensate for the uh, expected plastic deformation and expected ACL laxity later on. Which gender is more prone to it? Of course, females or girls, because of hormonal factors, because of anatomical differences, talking about the ACL shape and size, less fibers in the female group, 
narrower intercondylar approach in the female group, hip to knee alignment, Q angle, which is the high in the female group. Also the biomechanics, cutting and landing techniques in the not well-trained females is different and may uh, make them more prone to ACL injuries. Also ligament dyslexis, which is more common in girls than in boys, reflex action and strength and balance, which is much higher in boys. Females have four to six higher incidence of all knee injuries, including ACL, lateral ligament injuries, collateral ligament injuries, and osteochondral injuries. Females have two to eight higher falls of increased risk of ACL tears. Also, there is this, uh, concerns about the sports specific risks. Those types of sports with high pivoting like soccer, like team handball, basketball, Of, of course, all the professional level of activity and training have higher instance than the recreational level of activity and training. There's weak evidence in clinically immature patients with TOR ACL that supports early surgical reconstruction. Most are low strength studies lacking consistent evidence and does not allow to formulate recommendations or algorithms for management of such a group. Also, 20% of those uh, kids or basic age group having ACL injuries are prone to have contralateral ACL injuries at a later time in their life. The parents and the parents should have high index of suspicion. And if you suspect this, the first aid is to apply the price protocol, which is the protection, rest, ice, compression, and elevation. The goal of this treatment is to reduce pain and swelling, uh, and uh, this should be applied and make the base for early rehabilitation. We recommend continuing the treatment price protocol for at least the first 38 hours after uh, the time of injury. This may include strapping techniques, may include various types of immobilizers or supports, and of course, delaying or preventing weight bearing and using crutches. When parents are faced with a decision regarding the optimal treatment for their children with ACL injury, they commonly ask you, if this is your child, what would you do for most? And the answer is easy. We want the best surgeon to decide the best treatment that has the best outcome and the least probability of complication. But wow, this is not present. This is a matter of dreaming rather than reality. Interestingly, the paucity of high-level evidence of this area does not support the general conce uh, consequences of pediatric uh, the general consensus of pediatric sports medicine experts. So because of the pressure of parents, the pressure of clubs, and the pressure of media, especially in professional athletes, we have to think that many of these children uh, are in the national teams of their countries, and pressure pushes you uh, towards surgical intervention, although this by the evidence. No randomized trials in the treatment of pediatric ACL injuries have been reported and perhaps may not be feasible. Functional, radiographic, and long-term outcomes of pediatric and adolescent ACL reconstruction remains unclear, with most of our clinical decision-making studies with level four and five evidence. And this is uh, one of the surprising studies, which is uh, popularized and published in 2019, knee pathology in young adults after pediatric and tear recursive ligament injuries. And these are talking about nine years full up, and its conclusion, we are uh, the instance of new meniscal tears after ACL injuries is about 35%. Uh, and uh, this is also associated with other knee pathologies regarding the chondral and osteochondral injury. Primary active rehabilitation, close for up and delayed surgery if needed may be viable and treatment options for treatment of pediatric ACL injuries. What are the common types of ACL tears in children? Maybe cartilaginous avulsion, which is the more difficult to diagnose. Pony avulsion, which is the most easy to diagnose, which is known also as tibial eminence fracture. mid tear, which is the more common statistically, in the autopsy studies and MRI studies, and the partial tear. 
This very spectrum of injuries can make accurate diagnosis difficult. Obstacles in this category of patients include the open physis. Potential further growth should be considered. Ligamentous plexus, especially in girls, and the compliance of the patient and the parents. Also, the compliance of the training and the trainers. The other important challenges in this age group are potential risks of recurrent instability, secondary to chondra, meniscal, in this following non-operative treatment, and the risks associated, uh, associated with surgical treatment due to vulnerability of the open pulses, growth plate, and also the very vulnerable cartilage surface, uh, putting in mind that most instruments used in pediatric age group, which is available in most hospitals, are the same as used in adult age group. Further, if surgical treatment is true, there is controversy over the appropriate method of reconstruction as well as direction of graft material and fixation method. The proper with increased risk of the epidemiology, ACL tears fairly common and associated with hemoarthrosis, which is usually the first thing uh, makes us suspecting the injury. The mechanism usually lateral blow to the leg, especially in cutting maneuvers and soccer activities. The treatment could be non-operative and operative. And in my opinion, all these pediatric age group should be started non-operatively and making the operative decision as a second step in treatment. In this location can occur in this age group, but this needs special uh, different presentation and have different consideration, although there is common than other age group. And this is the classification of these locations, uh, which is uh, higher trauma and not commonly seen in uh, sports injuries. It's rather seen in uh, road traffic accidents. Treatment of this location include reduction with neurovascular examination as in adults, before and after, knee immobilization and extension, operation if there is an unstable knee with ligamentous injury, External fixation for stability of vascular uh, repair if required. The imaging, X-ray, which could be very deceiving in the children, especially in cartilaginous abulsion. MRI is the gold standard. Ultrasound, if the MRI is not available or expensive or skeletal immature imaging, the X-ray should be AB, lateral, notch, and merchant view. We should uh, examine the patellar dislocation, as Dr. Hisham said, fuzzy and maturity, open, narrowed, or closed ICs, partial injuries with stress views, which could be misdiagnosed or missed during collision by the radiologist and uh, the surgeon for the uh, primary injury of the ACL. The general indication for ACL surgery are patients' ability to participate when he choose in sports, and the word choosing sports is very precise because not every children and not every parent is adapted and can accept changing the type of sports uh, that their child is, is practicing participating, especially if they have spent many years in this sport or if the child is a member of the national team. Instability that affects activities of daily living, an associated treatable meniscal tears or function, a knee injury with multiple torn ligaments. Pediatric SL, we can consider repair, whether tibial or femoral avulsion, whether repair or augmented repair with PRV or stem cells. Enhancement of the growth, if we consider reconstruction, we have the transphysial option, partial transphysial option, and physial sparing techniques. What are the rebates in the pediatric age group? The timing of surgery, grade versus yearly, and most literature now supports delaying surgery for a few weeks, up to six weeks, and in some studies up to 12 weeks, giving enough time for conservative rehabilitation and evaluation. Graph choice, no rule for patellar tendon bone in this age group. Repair versus reconstruction. If we are talking about repair in other age group in these days, so repair is much more supported the pediatric age group putting higher potentiality of healing. Augmented repair, using ACL internal brace, material or fixation tools that to be used. Allograft should be completely avoided 
if at all possible, due to the unacceptable ferial rates noted in young active patients and the potential risk of disease transmission in such age group. Most orthopedic surgeons agree that the optimal surgical timing of ACL reconstruction is after full range of knee motion has been achieved unless in the setting of tibial eminence fracture or associated bucket handle, meniscal tear, and multiple ligamentous injury. This is what we mean by reconstruction. It could be physial sparing, it could be partial, partial transphysial, it, it could be a complete transphysial technique. These are the different techniques, and these are the different fixation methods. The decision to perform the type and the reconstruction and type of the graft choice should be determined by the remaining growth potential according to Tanner and the, uh, determined by Tanner staging and determination of skeletal age by hand radiographs, also now by MRI. Careful uses. fixation technique of internal bracing. This is a, 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 a algorithmic, algorithmic management of pediatric ACL injury. If we have complete symptomatic ACL tear in skeletally immature patients, we have to check for maturity assessment and skeletal age determination by standard staging, hand radiograph, and MRI. If he is very young, prepubescent, male below 12 years, female below 11 years, we will go uh, for uh, patients informed decision together with the parents. We have to try non-surgical treatments, activity modification if at all possible, closed chain rehabilitation. If the child complain of recurrent instability on resuming thinning, we have to go for physial sparing reconstruction. On the other hand, young adolescents with growth remaining, Tanner stage three or four, males three, 13 to 16, females 12 to 15. We can try partial transfer ZL with over the top femoral channel uh, uh, technique or transfer ZL with hamstring autograft and metaphysical fixation. Older adolescents and pre adolescents, male above 15, females above 14, can be treated as adults with reconstruction with interference screw fixation. Patellar tendon or hamstring autograft. In contrary to adults, the graft here is maximum 8 cm in diameter. The length is 55 to 65 mm in length. Femoral side tensioning button is preferred. Tibial side tensioning group is used. We have to mark sutures at 20, 25. And we have at all expenses to avoid over tightening of the graft to avoid premature epiphyseal closure and arrest. Going for the physial sparing or modified McIntosh, which is described very early in 2005, the eligible band harvested proximally and passed over an over the top position, then under the, uh, the meniscal coronary ligament. In this study, 44 patients, standard one and two, Two revision only at five to eight years, 98% normal or knee normal Lachman test, 100% normal or knee normal pivot. The IKDC is 96.7, no growth disturbance, but the and early onset arthritis is still there. Completely avoiding the physis in the very young age group, Tanner 1 and 2, by either going over the top, then under the menis inter meniscal ligament, then taking anteriorly and fixing the graft to the metaphysis or proximal diaphysis, using either screws, pushers, stables, or whatever you want. In contrast, in the right bar right, to the uh, partial transfer zeal, which can pass in, uh, in the tibia, keeping the part in the femur still extra physial or physial spinning. The slide, the, the picture in the very uh, right of the slide, going uh, all the funnel through the uh, proximal part of the epiphysis. The second one is returning back outside the epiphysis, going back to the proximal metaphysis of the epiphysis. What is the advantage of this technique? Sparing the physis, sparing the SGS, 
more constraint, more sense of security. The disadvantages are larger wounds, risk of meniscal or cartilage injury, tight knee when, are, when we are over enthusiastic to type the graft. All epiphyseal techniques, we can fix the graft by tarsus sutures. We can fix it as we see here. The tunnel is almost there in the, in the lower field, and the uh, graft is only in the proximal epiphysis of the tibia or just below the coronary ligament. Technique, we save this and we graft associates or a screw or a washer. Complete epiphysial technique, this is the same. Here is six endobutton to our femur and another endobutton in the proximal epithelial epiphysis. The advantages of all epiphysial technique to placed within the net uh, uh, and modify, uh, the modified uh, Macintosh technique, avoid potential growth disturbance related to transphysial drilling, and avoid potential growth disturbances by graft or the fixation technique. And this is the uh, cannula used to avoid uh, buckling of sutures when we are going under the intermeniscal ligament, and this is the graft harvesting. We can use in the femoral side, the outside end technique that is uh, another uh, uh, used in a PCA reconstruction, and we can use also damage intensifier. This is the BCL guide, which can be used to uh, get the long tunnel in the epiphysis, uh, avoiding the physis, and X-ray control is a must. Here we can use what's known as the retrograde drilling, by Philip Cut, and we can uh, apply this for the very young children with very successful results, avoid cartilage injury, and more accurate placement of the tunnels, making the uh, tunnel in the femur almost transverse. This is the tibial socket preparation. And this is the femoral side preparation with protection of the, and I prepare here to finish the last uh, one or two centimeters of the drill in the tibia and the femur using either uh, hand, using either manual reading or hand drill or just disconnecting the, uh, the uh, Jacob connection of the drill and using it manually under a very, con uh, very controlled power and very gradual technique to avoid harming the physis and to avoid harming the intra-articular bar of the tunnel. This is the post-operative MRI picture of the tunnel. When we go for the partial repair for the complete epiphyseal technique, we can pick by suture anchor, we can use transosseous sutures, and we can also use cannulated screws. The preferred technique and the most trustful technique for fixation is the transosseous sutures because the purchase of the anchor or the cannulated screw and the proximal tibial epiphysis is doubtful with uh, the follow-up because this part is mostly calcareous and what you can get the sensation of good purchase now can be later on with the start of rehabilitation, a weaker or poorer fixation. Partial repair with complete epiphysial technique in the femoral tibial side can be used as a said before, suture anchor, can rate it screw, and translucent suture. We can use primary repair or augmented repair or uh, supporting this repair with internal trace. Transphyseal with metaphyseal fixation, avoiding the tuberosity. The problem with this technique is you usually that you have to go for another operation to remove this small plate later on because neither the child nor his parents will accept leaving this metal in X-ray for a long time and also to avoid complication of delayed hardware problems. Maximal violation of the physis during the drilling allowed is 5 to 10% of the risk of the physis near the center and less than 5% in the periphery. Central part is the site of the drill and the peripheral bar is the site of the bottom. Therefore, tibial drill bit should be less than eight. And this is in reverse to the others 
which you, you don't usually accept a derivative of less than x. The most encounter type in our practice, although not the most frequently occurring, is C band eminence avulsion pressure. This is the plane X ray classification. Gray one is non displaced, grade two partially displaced, and gray three is completely displaced. But now it's largely replaced by MRI classification, which is five types type one non displaced with complete cartilage intact, type two minimally displaced with partial cartilage injury, type three A displaced with posterior intact hedge, type three B displaced and rotated and type 4 completely displaced and proximally migrated. The cartilaginous avulsion is the most difficult part to diagnose because there is no X-ray evidence of the injury and it can be missed even for the radiologist if, it's not, if he is not expert and uh, trained or, and oriented by such type of injury. Also, we uh, tackle the injury. We take transocean sutures uh, with the ACL and with the cartilaginous part using scorpion or suture less or whatever technique you want. And then we pass these sutures by transocean sutures and tie them out over a bony bridge, a screw, a washer, or a stain. This is another method of fixation using a tenuated screw. But as I said before, the problem with tenuated screw is that the purchase you get at the time of the operation is not the same maintained later on with follow up and rehabilitation. And so you get later or delayed plastic deformation. The unique and important consideration in pediatric patients are the effects of tunnel size and tunnel drill angle in the physis. The risk of physial arrest increases when the physial damage area affected by the drill is increased more than seven to nine percent. Also, the injury and the risk is increased using all uh, motor, uh, motor or power drill, using hand drill or manual drilling. And also, the risk of arrest increases when the tunnel drill angle become more oblique. So try to keep it as vertical as possible to decrease the surface area affected from the devices. Graft tension is also an important determination of physial damage. The higher the tension, the risk of physial injury, allograft usage is also shown to increase the rupture rate. And TBL eminence aversion, as I said before, should go down at a deeper part to compensate for the expected plastic deformation later. Tips for construction. Literature suggests that small diameter tunnels with soft tissue autografts, vertical tunnel placement, avoid implant or hardware fixation across the lateral distal femoral physis, and this graft tensioning minimizes the gross disturbances. ACL graft increases mainly in length, not in during growth. That's why we have tendency to delay the reconstruction as much as we can and as much the child and his parents can accept. ACL TBL angle becomes significantly larger with increasing age during the skeletal growth, and ACL rupture is higher than in adults. On the other hand, rate of significant growth disturbance is very low during, during applying these techniques. What's the near future? There is a Mayo Clinic project started 2019 using injection of uh, PRP with poor ACL together with augmentation or repair. The hypothesis is bridging of the one side uh, with ACL healing and not a stable bridge with brace or something like this to resist the site degradation and maintain the stability to simulate cell in growth and proliferation combined with suture for bio-enhanced repair. The hypothesis testing in vivo, large animal study so far in, in 30 pigs, bilateral ACL transection, one side treated with suture with BRB, contrasted with suture alone, outcome MRI and biomechanical and surgical studies, and the results are so far favorable and promising. Adding PRB did not make a difference. Equal yield loads, equal linear stiffness, equal knee laxity, but with protection for possible knee injuries and shortening the rehabilitation rate. Fibrin degradation in the joint could be decreased by 
uh, putting this in the right technique and applying scaffolds. How to prevent BRB from getting washed away using fibrin-based BRB, needing a carrier to make it resistant to plasmin dissolution in cyanuric fluids. Collagen will mix into fibrin and BRB forms a, a copolymer co that is resistant to degradation by a plasmin. Collagen activates platelets also. The carrier for bioactive agents includes MIACH scaffolds. Try multiple commercial collagens, but none met this criteria. That's why it is still under study. This is the future. Computer assisted SCA reconstruction. The advantage of this is more accurate tunnel placement, decrease the need for intraoperative imaging for the child and for the search. Rehabilitation, where bearing period after ACA therapy is typically delayed in children as compared to adults. Neuromuscular adaptation that occurs in young athletes following the period of peak growth. Adults with ACA. Simply stating, delaying the rehabilitation and no, don't be worried about possible quadriceps atrophy. Rehabilitation after ACA reconstruction needs to be individualized for each children, for each child. Patients, functional and sports ability, month and also tailored to the particular surgical procedure used and the particular fixation is applied. Early protection with pediatric knee braces is very important, especially this age group is very uncompliant. In general, a graduated rehabilitation program, usually a five-phase program as compared to four-phase program in adults, emphasizing full extension, immediate repairing with brace and crutches, active range of motion, strengthening the quadriceps and hamstring, hip and core can be started in the two weeks after surgery. Progressive rehabilitation during the first three months after surgery includes range of motion, exercises, stellar mobilization, proprioceptive exercises, endurance training, chain strengthening exercises, straight like jogging, plyometric exercises, sports specific exercises are added at four to six months and return to sports in children, not before eight to nine months. These are some types of uh, rehabilitation protocols applied in the third and fourth stage of rehabilitation. Prevention, the development of pediatric athletes neuromuscular control is shown to be a modifiable risk factor for developing an ACL tear. There are two recognized preventable programs. One is applied by the FIFA and the other is the prevention injury and enhancement program from Santa Monica, which are designed to improve the athletes neuromuscular control and in turn prevent ACL injuries, especially in girls especially in basketball. This is the evidence-based practice guidelines for prevention of anterior cruciate ligament injuries in young female athletes in a systematic review. In conclusion, various programs competent of ACL neuromuscular control and neuromuscular training are associated with a reduction of injury. They recommend that ACL neuromuscular training program targets young athletes and use trained implementation who appropriate lower body strength and exercise, and focus specifically on landing and stabilizing exercises, jumping and hold, drop and land throughout the sports season. Coaches, athletes, parents, practitioners can use developed skills to gain insight into the quality of their current AC neuromuscular training practice, as well as to inform modification or development of future AC neuromuscular training. For young girls, the best window of opportunity for ACL injury risk reduction may be during early puberty and early pubertal maturation. At or just before girls, neuromuscular risk factors start to become evident and ACL injury rates in girls dramatically increase. Pay attention and deep concentration. Learn to land, jump, and fall safely. Strengthen leg and thigh muscles. Neuromuscular training programs. In the clinical setting, we can use a simple drop vertical jump test to help us identify athletes at higher risk of ACL injury based on their landing mechanics, and then recommend these individuals to, the, to design it, therapists, and trainers to work to their neuromuscular control. 
These are some exercises to prevent ACL tears in girls, which are more vulnerable to this type of injury. Very important is to correct the wrong valgus angle in landing and running in girls. This in the picture in the left side, before hip abduction training, and the, the same girl after training of the pelvic muscle and the abductors. Also, uh, the picture in the right side, jumping and landing on one leg. One on the right is not trained, and one in the left is trained. Or uh, same squatting and squatting training, knee position during running and during landing on one leg, especially in basketball. This is the slide I gave before. What's the recommendation in 2019? The recommendation is to allow primary active rehabilitation, close follow up, delaying surgery if needed, except if associated injury or study preparation and follow up. They advocated that early surgery and meniscal repair of those with additional meniscal injuries that warrant surgery for children without additional injuries warranting surgery. This suggests primary at, uh, active rehabilitation cross for up with the option of late surgery. The same study. Increased time from injury to surgery was not significantly associated with additional injuries as evidenced by MRI, and as I said before, not associated with significant quadriceps weakening. The International Rhombic Committee consensus statement on pain management that's uh, elicited in 2017 and revised in 2019. These are very aspects that's overlooked. The psychological intervention for the children, sleep and nutrition intervention for the children, pharmacological pain management strategies in, yearly, uh, in, in elite athletes and the national teams. And this is available on the internet. In conclusion, here cruciate ligament injuries in pediatric patients are increasingly common. They can present as tibia eminence fracture, partial ACL injuries, complete ACL tears. MRI can be valuable for diagnosis of ACL tears and associated meniscal and contrary injuries in pediatric age group whose physical examination is difficult because of pain, swelling, hemorrhoids, and lack of cooperation. An ACL tear in a pediatric patient is not surgical emergency. Multiple discussion with the patient, with the trainer, and with the child are done with respect to athletes' goals, expect, expectations, type of sports to go to after uh, rehabilitation, and to reduce the family possible treatment options. The patient's skeletal age measured by anteroposterior radiographs of the left hand and the rest stage are important tools in planning the ideal surgical treatment techniques, the graft choice, the fixation choice, Surgical treatment has led to improved results in those with displaced imminent fracture, partial tear with both the pivot shift and anesthesia, and complete ACL tear. Technique for ACL reconstruction is typically based on the status of uh, files and variations of the treatment algorithm guided by the age. Neuromuscular training is very important. And thank you for your attention. And please stay safe. Thank you so much, Professor uh, Wael Nassar, for this. Interesting talk in this interesting topic. هو يعني بصراحة topic رائع دكتور وائل بي. فاحنا بنشكر حضرتك شكر جزيل. وانا شايف استاذنا دكتور هشام بيل قاضي رجع تاني معانا. فا we are very happy with both of you sir. We are waiting for questions for professor وائل نصار. The first question دكتور وائل from دكتور ماجد سامي professor دكتور ماجد سامي. Instance of retear after pediatric ACL. Does uh, the graph diameter increase with growth? Shokran, uh, thank you, Dr. Magid. Uh, no, unfortunately, the, gra the graph diameter doesn't increase with growth, only the length. And this is uh, the problem uh, of early intervention. That's why the most surgical protocols now recommend for delaying intervention as much as we can. Uh, the second part of the question, uh, the possibility of retear. Uh, in some studies, it's up to 40%. Uh, and part of this is due to anatomical variations in the intercondyle and roach. And this is also the basis that most or many of these children will have ACL injury in one side, usually have ACL injury on the other side later on in life. 
So the possibility of repair in some studies 37 to 40%, other studies up to 60%. Thank you, sir. Any other questions to Dr. Weil? Uh, we have another question. So regarding transvisial with metaphyseal fixation, why to avoid tuberosity? Is it due to bony immaturity? From Dr. Suleiman Yunis. The tuberosity, there is the hypothesis, as we know. We don't uh, uh, want this child to go into uh, problems with the growth of the extensor mechanism, uh, as Dr. Hisham said. We don't know this child to go into Osgood-Schlatter's disease. We don't know this part to be weakened so that it can be got uh, avulsion injuries uh, with uh, resistant extension activities. That's why we uh, uh, make our fixation distal to this part. Yes, sir. Any other questions from the audience? كنت عايز اسال الدكتور هشام بعد حضرتك بالنسبه للكوادرس بتاعك انا الحقيقه فعلا واجهني دكتور هشام بيه ودكتور هشام يوتد دكتور هشام اه تمام هو كده معانا فانا أيوة. سؤال لحضرتك انا الحقيقه جزء كبير من الناس دي استخدمت لهم السوتشر انكرز الار سي انكرز ده اسرع طبعا في السيرجيكال تكنيك واصغر في الجرح والحقيقه الفولو اب بتاعهم كان بالنسبه لي معقول جدا ريزنبل فانا بسال خير حضرتك مقارنه السوتشر انكور بالترانس اوس السوتشرز فور ويتش ويتش كاتيجوري الكوالدسبس رابتشر فروم ذا بروكسيمال بور اوف ذا باتل بروكسيمال بور اوف ذا يعني هو صراحه احنا بننظر ليها فروم ذا ايكونوميك بوينت اوف فيو فانا لو عملت تو هولز with a bony bridge sufficient enough to uh, avoid cutting through the two exit uh, uh, holes and it, uh, one uh, suture uh, the, the thread will pass through two tunnels equal to two suture or two anchors okay. and we apply the same technique in uh, rotator cuff for supraspinatus uh, avulsion and for uh, flexor halicious longus transfer to augment the tendo Achilles rupture. And in any soft bone, even if you have an MCL avulsion from the medial femoral condyle, we apply the same technique. Once I am in an epiphyseal area, the AC bond number five is, has a very strong rigid needle that you can pass through easily through uh, the soft metaphyseal bone. And if you have a better bone stock that would not allow the passage of the needle, you may apply a, say, a very small owl, for example, a K wire, to start a, as a starter to drill the cortex, and then you pass the needle. After passage of the needle of one single suture, you may have the efficacy of two suture or two anchors. سؤال الثاني هل حضرتك في العينين دول باعتبار ان الكوادريسبس تشو هنا بيبقى وحش عادة؟ Uh, do you augment uh, this part with uh, yes. uh, I augment uh, with, with gracilis or sometimes with uh, semitendinosis. The same, uh, like I am doing uh, uh, banner suture, for example, or crisscross, I pass the, the gracilis or the semitendinosis across the soft tissue uh, part of the quadriceps tendon and then passing it through two longitudinal drill holes in the, through the bethel. But the, the difficulty in the quadriceps that you cannot protect because you have no more proximal bone like the patella and the tibial tuberosity when you are going to uh, repair the patellar tendon. So you have to modify your post-operative rehabilitation for longer time, avoid vigorous bending of the knee, and uh, use a brace for a long time, maybe 12 weeks at least. هو ذا ادفانتج اون ذا اذر هاند دكتور هشام ان الكوادريسبس هنا فليشي ماسكولر فاليلد بتاعها بيقلل الستريس اه بتقلل الستريس اه يلدز وذ تايم بس يو ميك شور يو شوب ميك شور اوف كومبليت هيلينج بيفور يو ار جوينج يو جو تو انكريز فليكشر رينج اوف موشن بياند 90 يعني يو شودنت جو بياند 90 ات ليست افتر 10 ويكس فور اكزامبل 2 اند هاف مانث جراديوال جراديويتد Okay. 
Thank you, sir. And you should have a very meticulous cooperative patient. He is responsible for success of such surgery. Sure. Uh, we have a question to uh, Professor Hisham Al Adi. Lain harak, we don't have any question there. Thank you, sir. Can it be possible? So, Dr. Rami Sharif, bilateral TB tendons mid substance rupture. How would you judge the correct length of the repair? Would you use a cat on the shamp or another guide, sir? I have introduced the criteria for the uh, judging for judgment of the proper tension on the operative table. First, you should have a slack repair, which is difficult, of course. If you have an old tear, you are anxious to make it tight. By nature, you are going to make it tight. But the normal tendon, if you are going to do, for example, an open wedge or high tibial osteotomy or closed wedge, you can see the slackness of the patellar tendon. In full extension of the knee, while the patient is anesthetized, the patellar tendon is quite lax. And you may pass a human underneath, and you can see the slackness of the patellar uh, tendon while the patient is anesthetized. So the first is you may you should have a slack repair, not a very tight. Second, you may have a lateral interoperative lateral view, and after you repair, because you before you finalize the fixation, you should have uh, the tip of the patella opposite to the blumen set line at the position of around 40 degrees in lateral view. The second one, third, is very, is very easy, is the unsole uh, salvati index, measure the length of the patella, and you should have an equal length of the patella tendon after repair. The, this is the, doesn't matter if the patient has a unilateral side or bilateral. This is the criteria of normal patella height and uh, normal tension of the patella tendon. But fortunately, we are dealing with collagen. You know, by, by nature, this collagen is a retractile soft tissue. It is not elastic like uh, rubber, but for example, when you are going to treat a long-standing varus knee uh, with lax lateral structures, not injured, but the lateral structures is attenuated and lengthened with time for say, for example, 10 years of various knee with a patient having a medial compartment osteoarthritis. So you have a lateral lax structures. After correction of the uh, various knee with valgus, high tibial osteotomy, whatever the type, closed wedge or open wedge, after six weeks, you have a, la a recoil of the collagen on the lateral side that was previously uh, quite lax and elongated. And the same criteria for the current concepts, they attack the difference between closed, open, closed and open wedge high table estimate. They mentioned that open wedge high table estimate tightens the patella downwards, and the closed wedge high table estimate relaxes the patella tendon and they cause some sort of patella alta. But what, two years later, they correct this, uh, not uh, this uh, 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 mark and they correct that it doesn't work because collagen will retract to its normal original lens. There is no patella baha after open wedge high tibial osteotomy, and there is no patella alta after closed wedge osteotomy because we are dealing with collagen that is it stretched with time and it regains its normal lens after some time, it recoils. So a, a, a minimum difference in about five millimeters in quadriceps tendon or patellar tendon doesn't make a difference after long-term follow-up because tissues, like Professor Wael said, it, uh, it goes with time and it corrects itself to the original lens, like the, patella, the quadriceps tendon. The quadriceps tendon exertional lens is about 40 centimeters from the patella to the origin of the uh, 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 rectus femoris the reflected head and straight head. And the patellar tendon is extremely short, about uh, four centimeters, for example. But when you have a long, a long tendon and the long excursion of the muscle, it will uh, cover a minimum difference in length. The same, the same technique and the same idea when you are using a hamstring tendon, for example, average length 
8 centimeters in ACL reconstruction and a pontendum, but a pontendum more with a collagen excursion area about average three centimeters, three, three and a half centimeters or four centimeters. So the excursion length of recoil of collagen in the hamstring differs completely from the patellar bone tendon bone. So we are dealing with collagen, which is forgiving. You are, we are not treat, use, uh, treating bone or concrete or something solid tissue. We are treating collagen, which will yield with time. And it will regain its normal, near normal original length with a repetitive uh, 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 guided uh, post-operative rehabilitation programs. Shukran gazeelan, Ustazna Dr. Hisham Bia ala tawdih al-gameel da fan. Shukran ifan. Any other questions? Any other questions? Okay, now we come to the end. بنشكر أساتذتنا الأفاضل أستاذ دكتور هشام بالقاضي وأستاذنا وأخي الحبيب أستاذ دكتور وائل بن الصار على تشرفهم لنا اليوم في التيتشينج كورس. يعني إحنا شرفنا وسعدنا بتواجد حضراتكم معانا يا فندم ونأمل برضو إن حضراتكم تشرفونا في باقي الكورس يا لو وقت حضراتكم يسمح ب